to thank uh, each and every one of you for coming to this amazing discussion today. And uh, our speaker for today is Irene Grizzo, who is also a success keeper for Zara's Dream, representing Europe. She's one amazing young woman who has uh, sacrificed her time to talk to us today about something that she really loves and she's so passionate about, and that's environmental and climate crisis. And so today she's going to take us through the gender perspective when it comes to environmental and climate management. And I hope each and every one of you is going to learn so much from this discussion. And also this is our first talk for this year. You know, so I'm excited uh, and I'm so happy to see you joining us today. So we can just start, Irene. Yeah, sure. Okay, hi everyone. And thank you so much, Okech, for your kind words and your kind introduction. And thank you, Zara's Dream, for giving us the opportunity to have this conversation today and also for providing a safe space for young women to grow professionally, professionally and personally. And um, as Okech said, uh, my name is Irene Rizzo and I'm specialized in environmental law. And I'm very happy to be here today to discuss a topic that I'm very passionate about. Uh, that is environmental and climate crisis and in particular the, the impacts on women, especially. And I'm going to lead this conversation as Zara's dream sister skipper for, for Europe. Um, I really would like this to be um, an inclusive conversation and inclusive discussion. So please, um, it's not going to be a lecture and you are very much encouraged to uh, participate, to share um, your experience, your opinions, your reflections, um, examples from your countries or even situations you may be aware of. Uh, happening in, in your countries and in your environment. Um, so I will uh, start by giving a short introduction to the topic. This is going to take about 15 to 20 minutes, but I will stop in the middle to take a first round of questions or comments or interventions. So we have about one hour, we can, we can start. Thank you, Naya, for running the presentation and yeah, uh, if you are okay with it, let's start. First slide, please. <clears throat> so the environmental crisis, what do we mean for environmental crisis? Um, over the past 50 years, human activities have altered the ecosystems more rapidly and extensively than in any other time in human history. And for those of you who may not be familiar with the term ecosystems, this is defined by the Cambridge Dictionary as the old plant animal people living in, a, in an area considered together with their environment as a system of relationships. So basically we can think of, a, of an ecosystem as a geographic area where plants, uh, humans, organisms, and animals all coexist and interact. So on the one hand, uh, the increased production and use of ecosystem services have contributed to significant economic development and human well-being. On the other, the severe loss of biodiversity, mainly due to uh, land use change, but also climate change, invasive alien species, um, overexploitation and pollution, has reduced um, the resilience of ecosystems and altered them. So in 2019, a report from IBES, um, IBES is the Intergovernmental Science Policy Platform on Biodiversity and Ecosystem Services, revealed that um, the health of ecosystems is deteriorating more rapidly than ever, and one million animal and plant species are threatened with extinction. Um, the report also identified climate change as one of the drivers of biodiversity loss. Uh, next slide, Naya, please. Perfect. Um, so the climate crisis, what do we mean for climate crisis? Again, climate crisis, climate change uh, has been described as the defining issue of our time. But what do, we, what do we mean for climate change or global warming? What is it? Um, I will try and explain it in simple words, and this is not a scientific definition, it's just for us to understand what we are talking about. So um, solar energy radiating back to space from the Earth's surface is absorbed by greenhouse gases in the Earth's atmosphere and re-emitted in all directions. And this is a natural phenomenon. However, 
scientists believe that we are adding to the natural greenhouse effect with gases released from human activities like agriculture, transportation, industry, and so more energy is being trapped in the atmosphere, and this increases the temperature. And scientists say that temperatures are now rising more faster than at many other times. So the devastating consequences of climate change are already being felt all around the world, everywhere. Um, rising temperatures are fueling environmental degradation, but also weather extremes, natural disasters, uh, food and water insecurity, uh, economic disruption, terrorism, conflict, you know. And you may also know that sea levels are rising and the Arctic is melting, forests are burning, and coral reefs are ble bleaching. Um, I know this may sound like a terrifying scenario, I know, but unfortunately, this is really happening. However, it's not too late to act. And I will repeat this, it's not too late to act. Um, we need, what we need is a transformational change. We need to change the way we grow food, we transport goods, uh, we use land and we produce energy. Next slide, please, Naya. So the link between gender and the environment, let's get to the core of our discussion. Uh, what does gender have to do with all this? Uh, gender and environment are very much interconnected. On the one hand, increased gender equality creates more resilient societies and communities and may have positive impacts on the environment and social well-being. On the other, research demonstrates that when environmental conditions worsen, also the treatment of women and girls worsen. In 1985, the United Nations World, World, uh, Fourth World Conference on Women um, adopted the Beijing Platform for Action and identified women and the environment as one of the 12 critical areas for uh, for action and of concern. And the platform acknowledged that although women suffer the greatest effects of environmental degradation, they remain very much marginalized when it comes to policy form formulation and uh, decision making in uh, natural resources and environmental management. Also, um, gender roles have historically created differences in the way men and women engage with the environment. In rural areas, especially, um, environmental protection may be seen as duty, and this is because her caregiving responsibilities and livelihood activities are often highly dependent on the environment. In fact, traditionally, women are those in charge of growing food, collecting water, collecting fuel, wood uh, for their households. Uh, so these duties connect them with the environment but also make them more, more vulnerable to environmental changes. Next slide, please, Naya. So the impacts of the environmental and climate crisis on women. We know that environmental and climate changes affect both men and women, but in different ways. So when it comes to environmental changes, the degradation of ecosystem services due to human activities leads to less quality and or availability of land, forests, biodiversity, and water. In fact, according to the UNDP, the United Nations Development Program, six out of 10 of the world's forests are female, who are more affected by flooding, by um, droughts, biodiversity loss, deforestation, and other environmental changes. Environmental changes, therefore, um, reduce the livelihood options and increase and exacerbate conflicts, competition over natural resources, displacements, and also poverty. Also, men and women experience climate change in different ways. According to the uh, United Nations Environment Program, UNEP, generally more women than men die in natural disasters. And after disasters, Women are, suffer the most from shortages of food and economic resources, but are also more exposed to uh, gender-based violence. 
And another scenario may be one in which men have to leave their villages and seek work elsewhere as a result of climate change. And therefore women are left behind and they have an increased number of household responsibilities um, in degraded environments. So in this situation, um, women may be exposed to new security risks, again, to gender-based violence, sexual uh, harassment, and this situation can even pose some barriers to access to, to education. So next slide, please, Naya. So uh, let me stop here for now and ask you a first question uh, so we can have an inclusive and a conversation. So what are the impacts of climate change and environmental degradation on women in your country? Annette, over to you, maybe to moderate the discussion. Uh, thank you very much, Irene, for the great start. And uh, for our question, I think I can be the first to answer it as we wait for the rest. If you want to answer it, you can just raise your hand. I'll choose you after I'm done. So in my country, actually, we have a large problem when it comes to climate change uh, in, and environmental degradation on women, especially on the northern part of Kenya. I'm, I'm from Kenya, actually. So these are the people in the northern part of Kenya are mostly pastoralists and they depend on their animals and water. And uh, right now when you see like a lot of uh, rivers are drying up and uh, they don't have access to enough water, you find that women are the ones who travel to longer distances to go and fetch the water. And they take as long as one hour to those places. And you know, in those areas, the security also is not really very good because uh, you find that there are a lot of bandits and this is very risky for young girls and women. And because uh, uh, they all, all, almost of the time, they're just like alone, the girls alone. So it's very risky for them in such kind of situations. They can be sexually harassed, they can be attacked. And also they uh, have high, high rises of uh, early marriages because most of them tend to go and marry in places where there's water, you know? So I think such kind of uh, uh, negative impacts uh, that climate change has really uh, impacted on women in our country. So thank you. Achita, you can just come in. Yes, uh, good, good evening or good morning for you, everyone. <laughs> Um, uh, thank you, Irene. It's so interesting what you're presenting. And uh, actually, I am not uh, very uh, familiar with the subject. And I was curious about uh, seeing it. And really, you're making me <laughs> reflect on things that I, I never thought about, that there were a link uh, between uh, climate change and, uh, and uh, women condition. So uh, thank you. And thanks again, Zahara Dreams, to to allow us to follow this kind of, uh, of conversations. Uh, for me, I would like to speak about what's happening in Chad. I'm currently uh, working and living in Egypt, but uh, I noticed that in Chad, uh, women, uh, before they were depending on, um, you know, they cook with uh, wood, actually. So it's not, uh, it's not gas or electricity, but wood. Mm -hmm. And uh, the climate change made that uh, there were no more uh, trees or uh, very few trees. So uh, we noticed in rural, rural areas and even sometimes in the city, uh, they can't afford to, to cook for their, their children. So uh, when we discuss, and uh, I have been participating sometimes in the, in seminars, etc., and we're talking at this time. We're mainly speaking about the fact that the government has uh, made an introduction in selling uh, wood, so it made it very difficult for the women to 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 cook, and it's a really basic need for for a person. So this is what I wanted to to exchange with you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ashta, for that. So I really can just go on with the presentation. Yeah, exactly. No, I just wanted to comment on what you and Ashta have just said. And yeah, it's absolutely true that when some key resources, essential resources like water or woods or other types of fuel are placed farther away from where women live, they need to spend more time 
in reaching out to these resources. And this can be time that they would be spending doing something else like cooking or even going to schools when it comes to young uh, girls. And also one problem with water that is placed far away is that um, maybe this water is not, is even contaminated or polluted and this can lead to other problems like poor sanitation and even health problems eventually, um, especially, especially for women. Or as you were saying, um, okay, even on the way to, to collect water, they can, they can uh, encounter security risk or sexual harassment and this is always a reality for, for young women, or young women, adult women. Um, so yeah, if there's nobody else, I will just continue with the presentation. Irene, may yeah. I come in? Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, sorry, I did, not, I did not raise my hand here. Sorry, in advance. <laughs> um, so I, I think in my country, I live in Brazil, and uh, at least what I see uh, at national level is that uh, women here play an important role in agriculture. So in providing food and food service for, for their families. And I think they not always we have seen like the, this women's perspective um, uh, reflected on policies and strategies. And also, I think this, is, this uh, has an impact on how we think about adaptation strategies, for instance, in agriculture. So how uh, we can reach these women uh, to provide technical assistance and improve the way you know, they, they <clears throat> cultivate their own food. So I think this is, is the problem, perhaps, the fact that uh, it's not uh, well reflected in the national strategies, these genders perspectives, and also a lack of uh, data collection disaggregated by gender. So I think we have not, uh, we, we still have to improve a lot uh, here in Brazil. We have to advance. Thank you. Thank you so much, Juliana. Yeah, you are absolutely right. Um, I think the genders, the gender perspective should be included in policy formulation and um, yeah, in action plans and other measures that are adopted at the government level or even at the, at the local level. And um, so the, the gap, the gender gap is more visible in societies where the social and economic uh, rights are not equally uh, enjoyed. In the, development, in the developed world, you can you can experience some sort of difference in the way men and women experience climate change. Does someone mic? Okay. Um, so if you agree, okay, so we'll just continue with the presentation, and then we we can have a second round of questions and interventions uh, later on. Yes, yeah, Irene, can just go on. Okay, fantastic. Thank you so much. Um, thank you, Naya. Okay, so 25 years after the UN um, United Nations Fourth World Conference on Women, I was referring to this conference um, earlier. It took place in 1995. So 25 years after, uh, women's participation in leadership uh, in decision making still lack adequate recognition and support. Uh, so good governance in environmental management can only be achieved if barriers to gender equality are addressed. And according to the IUCN, the IUCN is the International Union for the Conservation of Nature, uh, there are three gender, uh, critical gender gaps that present barriers to um, sustainable ecosystem management. Number one, unequal and insecure rights over land. In fact, globally, women represent only 13.8 percent of landholders and often face many legal and social barriers in all aspects related to land rights. In many cases, women do not have decision-making power over uh, how land is used and managed. Second aspect, underrepresentation in natural resource decision-making and leadership. Both 
at the, nat uh, at the national and at the local levels, women are underrepresented in natural resource and environmental decision making. And third point, gender-based violence. And this may be used as a form of control, suppression, exploitation to maintain and strengthen gender inequality, especially when natural resources are scarce or under stress. Next slide, please, uh, Naya. Thank you. Um, so women can and should play a crucial role in protecting and restoring the environment and in developing sustainable consumption and production patterns. The involvement of women in environmental manage, uh, management and governance provides an opportunity to address the social inequalities. In particular, the participation of women should be promoted in community consultations, planning, budgeting, and decision-making processes, all related to environmental and climate management. Second, their needs, priorities, and knowledge should not be ignored or overlooked. In fact, women have a unique knowledge when it comes to natural resources and the environment. As I said before, they are the providers of food, but also of fuel, of water for their households. So considering this into climate change adaptation plans can help um, have better plans, can help design better plans. And I can bring an example from South Asia a study from South Asia shows that women have adopted strategies uh, to protect their food from uh, climate change uh, effects like flooding by storing seeds, for instance, in higher places. Um, and this is a, an example of how women have knowledge that is different from the, the knowledge men have and that can be used and uh, should be considered and taken into consideration in all environmental discussions. Third point, women should be actively involved in the implementation of initiatives for the management of natural resources and the environment. Um, in fact, women have social network uh, can, that can help have broader discussions. And also this can highlight women's capacities as leaders and decision makers and can increase even their participation in other political processes. I will give you an example from Sudan where women in some communities have become actively involved um, in facilitating dialogue over natural resource disputes. And this is a role that previously was only reserved to men. And the fourth point um, is the structural barriers and particularly financial barriers to natural resources that should be addressed. Next slide, please, Naya. Naya. Thank you. Thank you so much. So the equal inclusion of both genders would be beneficial for different reasons. First reason, the traditionally differentiated roles um, and due to this, men and women have different knowledge, as I said before, of uh, environmental protection and natural resources management. And women possess knowledge and skills that are critical to finding local solutions and support climate change adaptation. But also, according to the um, IPCC, um, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, um, securing land title and land access or control for women increases not only women, uh, women's willingness to engage in conservation efforts like planting trees or um, soil sustainable soil management, but also their, um, their investments in sustainable agriculture. And the third point, investments in women's education can reduce their vulnerability to weather related uh, disasters and increase their resilience to climate change impacts. Um, as I said before, knowledge can also, can also help women figure out more uh, sustainable and efficient farming techniques or also uh, ecotourism opportunities. Uh, next slide, please, Naya. So lastly, 
I want to tell you how around the world women are already contributing to their country's efforts. And this is uh, by uh, stopping environmental degradation, conserve and restore ecosystems, promote the development of green cities and use of clean energy resources like renewable energy, uh, respond to the climate crisis by modifying production and consumption patterns, use water and soil more sustainably, and manage disaster risk reduction and response plans. So women are already very much involved in some countries in uh, the environmental governance. And on top of that, research indicates that women express more concern for the environment, support policies that are more beneficial to the environment, and tend to vote for leaders that care about the environment. Another study uh, from 25 developed and 65 developing countries suggest that women with more that countries with more women in parliaments are more likely to establish protected areas and another study of 130 countries shows that women are more likely to ratify international environmental treaties so thank you very much for your attention and let's open again the floor for discussion. Uh, over to you, Annette. Well, thank you very much, Irene. Personally, I've learned so much when it comes to, you know, the role of women, the inclusion of women in climate and uh, environmental policies, you know. Like in my country, I, I know that they've really done so much to include uh, women in uh, the decision making processes. And the, if you know, we have, uh, we used to have, I know the late Wangari Madai, who was one of the champions of the environment, you know. So I think uh, th those kinds of uh, policies and uh, inclusion of women uh, enabled women like Ma Wangari Madai. And also there's so many young women nowadays in my country who are really fighting for environmental, you know, so that they, there are a lot of cases of environmental degradation in my country, if you've been following the news, but uh, the people who are fighting for it are mostly young people. And that's something that uh, I've really loved to learn from you. At least now I know so much about climate and environmental crisis on the gender perspective. And uh, I think Naya has raised her hand. She um, can come yeah, in. Thank Please you, Irene. Me. I learned a lot, actually. Thank you very much. And mm -hmm. I would like to share an experience recently uh, which happened in Sri Lanka. Uh, we are very concerned about the environment because we are an island. Sri Lanka is an island. But uh, our environmentalists, they, they say that uh, the various projects uh, carried out by the government are damaging or destroy the environment. So recently, uh, there was a project about uh, highway. So, uh, so the uh, a female environmentalist uh, voiced up that uh, this project is harmful to the environment and it it, did draw, it destroy the uh, kind of rare uh, trees. So, what happened? Uh, there were many hate speeches around her on social media, and when uh, a good study of this shows that uh, that she was exposed these hate speeches because she's a woman, so it was very pathetic and like. Um, thank you so much. Like I got many, many, many ideas about the about the gender and the relation between gender and the environment. Thank you again. Thank you so much, Naya. Uh, thank you for this your intervention and for bringing your experience and knowledge from Sri Lanka. Actually, Sri Lanka, by being um, an island, is more exposed to the effects of climate change, including sea levels rise. Uh, that especially in coastal areas that are densely populated or even small island states, um, sea levels rise is really uh, creating a lot of problems and may in future be, it's already, but may in future become one of the main reasons even for uh, migration. So I don't know if anyone has any other uh, comments. Um, I actually would like to know from you if um, there are any best any other best practices of women participation in environmental governance, or how women, um, young women and and young girls, I mean young girls and other youth in your countries are tackling the environmental and climate crisis. That would be a very interesting discussion to have. I Thank see you so much. Oh, yes, sorry. 
Yeah, and you can come in and Muko from Kenya, you can come in. Hello, hi guys. Hello, Anne. Hello, Anne. we can hear you, just go on. Okay, thank you. Uh, first of all, I would, I would like to say I'm excited to be here. It's like my first session joining you guys. Thank you, Kate, for inviting me. Uh, uh, mine is more of a comment. I wanted to say that I haven't done a lot of work on gender, on the intersection between gender and climate. So I'm excited to be here to learn from Irene. If I'm not wrong, she's the speaker. And mine is more of a comment. I come from Kenya and I was concerned or a bit excited to see you talk about land life and title deeds as a way in which women can get to be involved in the policy against climate change. And in this country, in Kenya, that is, uh, the issue of title deeds is a very concerning issue. It is always hectic and more so women are not very, do not have access to them. And without land in Kenya, you Kenya is a very agricultural country. Without land, women, where women are not involved in uh, in owning title deeds to land, they are sort of kept out of the conversation on climate change. And and I don't know if there are like lessons from from you guys on in other countries how young women or how women generally can be involved in these conversations or how we can push women more women to push for title deeds or to own land. Thank you. Thank you so much, Anne, for highlighting that issue of title deed and for, you know, giving women the same rights as men when it comes to owning land. And uh, actually, what I can say even uh, from Kenya, yes, we are from Kenya, it's an issue that has been uh, having a lot of debate, but I'm very hopeful in the near future, everything will be okay and uh, both men and women will own land equally for our future generations. So I'm seeing, I think I'm seeing a hand up. Oh, is there anyone who wants to come in? Come in, Ashta, come in. Yes, thank you. I, I would like to, to, to leave also the floor to my other sisters. Uh, so uh, I, I really thank uh, Irene once again, because uh, it's, uh, I'm more about uh, sports law, et cetera. So this is a really new area for me. I didn't know about it. So. Uh, I'm happy to learn about it. And uh, I was asking on the chat also if Irene uh, has any book uh, to, to recommend so that maybe I will learn a little bit about uh, women and, uh, and um, environmental crisis. So this is uh, my question. And uh, another question um, in her introduction, um, Irene was uh, talking about uh, also terrorism and conflict as uh, consequences of climate change. So I'd like to know if she can develop a little bit because uh, uh, I, would love, I would like to, to hear about this, please. Thank you. Thank you so much, Akshita. Um, this is a very interesting link that you are presenting between terrorism and climate change. In fact, you said you come from Chad and this is interesting because the Lake Chad region, in fact, is very much exposed to climate change. And not only because the lake was shrinking, it's no longer shrinking, but it was in the past. And this triggered a series of consequences that um, affected not only women, but also communities, entire communities. And it's linked to the insecurity in the area that we see today. In fact, because of climate change and um, rainfalls, climate change affected not only the lake, the area, uh, the water area of the lake, but also the rainfalls in the region. And this has caused um, conflicts over the scarce natural resources that are in the area and uh, conflict between farmers and, um, and herders most times. And this forced many people to migrate and those who have not migrated have sometimes joined these uh, armed forces that and caused the, the, the situation in the area that is not really, uh, it's not really safe up until now. Um, for what uh, concerns the book, um, 
more than a book I can suggest, uh, there's a report from the UN on the link between gender and climate change. I think is it 2019 report or 2020. I can find it and I can share it with you uh, in the chat. If I can find it now, I will share it. Um, so that report uh, really touches upon different uh, areas in which you can see uh, this relationship and this link between gender and the environment and how uh, degradation of the environment and climate change are affecting women in different areas, including health, uh, education, and other human rights like, um, uh, like food, uh, shelter, and as I said, health. Um, um, regarding the comment that was made on Kenya, this is interesting because she said, I think it was Anne, she said that uh, Kenya is pretty much uh, a country um, where agriculture takes a huge part of uh, the income of the population. And this is interesting because climate change can have really a, a terrible uh, effect on, on agriculture, especially for women. Imagine if um, droughts or floodings destroy the, the entire harvest for that year. And that is not only the source of livelihood, but also the source of income for some women. And then they can't sell uh, that produce anymore at the local market. And then they go to the local market and they find that prices have um, increased terribly. Um, so obviously uh, the impacts on, on the most vulnerable communities is due to the fact that these communities depend uh, the most on natural resources that are very much exposed to the effects of climate change. Thank you so much, Irene, for that. If anybody has any question or just want to add anything, you can just raise your hand. Giuliani, you can come in. Thank you, Annette. Thank you so much, Irene. Again, I learned a lot from you. And uh, I think it's extremely important to bring awareness on this debate, especially making this interlinkage with gender. Um, I just uh, perhaps would like to share an initiative in Brazil that uh, <clears throat> was very successful in bringing this topic to, to a political level, to a high level. Uh, <clears throat> and um, this is a youth-led uh, organization called Engaja Mundo. And uh, they basically um, bring uh, young Brazilians like you, you volunteer to take part in this organization and they create working groups and they have local hubs around all the, the states in Brazil where they discuss specific topics, including climate change. And the, basically they have uh, activities of capacity building, advocacy, and uh, they, can, they are able to influence also on a local level and, and national level. So uh, the most important achievement since they, um, they started acting was, was to create the first delegation of young Brazilians to the conference of parties. So uh, of the uh, United Nations Climate Change Convention. So I think it, it, it's an interesting way they have succeeded. I, I can share the link here. So perhaps most of you already know about it. But I think it's it's very interesting uh, the engagement at the political level. You know, it's not only it, it's not only acting locally, but being able also to influence uh, the shape shaping the, the the policies at national level. Absolutely, this is very important. Uh, what you're saying, Juliana. And we can see all around the world already, uh, young people are getting organized and are bringing uh, the, the climate uh, discussion into the political agenda, not only at the local level, but also at the national level. They're really putting pressure on governments 
uh, to do something to curb emissions and to adapt to climate change. And um, in fact, I'm planning to have this kind of conversation on uh, how young women are leading the climate justice and the environmental justice movement uh, in June uh, on, uh, on Facebook. This will be focused exactly on that, on how young women and particularly young girls, there are so many young girls out there that are doing an amazing job and not just Greta Thunberg, but also many others like there's Vanessa Vash from uh, Uganda, who, no, yes, Uganda, who is doing an amazing job. And they're really um, pushing forward the, the climate uh, discourse, even at the national level. Uh, so thank you so much, Juliana, for highlighting that organization in Brazil. What is the name again? Engaja Mundo. It's uh, translating is like an engaging word. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Okay, great. I, I also know that Naya knew uh, some organizations doing the same work in, in Sri Lanka. Am I right? Yeah, yeah, I know. That's great. Thank you. Um, so thank you so much. Um, I don't know if there's any other questions. Yes, Irene. Handsome can come in. Handsome. If Hansem can't come in, can, can Smith come in, please? If you have anything to say about our topic of today and what you've learned, and if you want us also to learn from you. Okay. Uh, it's evening here in Nigeria. Good evening. You can hear me, right? Yes, we can. Oh, awesome. I'm so good to be here. Sorry, I, jo I joined in late. Um, today has been a pretty hectic day anyway, so I joined in late. Uh, well, but I think uh, for uh, climate activities in Nigeria, uh, particularly Port Harcourt, we are reside, we've been having issues with uh, what we call um, black suit, um, probably because of environmental pollution from um, multinational and um, um, refinery and development in this part of um, Nigeria. So uh, we've been having some form of engagement with um, stakeholders and the government, including some multinationals, you know, to see how they can uh, adopt uh, renewable energy uh, solutions, you, you know, so to reduce this um, um, environmental pollution. So it's really, really serious. Uh, in Port Harcourt here, and we are having um, some people are faced with health challenges and the likes, you know, because of the suit and um, black suit. And so, but well, we've been having some series of conversation around the climate uh, um, change conversation. So, yeah, so I'm so happy to be here. Sorry I joined in later with them. You know, I, I hope we'll have some of the recordings as time goes on. Thank you so much. So good to be here. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you so much. Thank you. Even if you've joined late, at least you've uh, added something to our conversation. We appreciate that. If anybody wants to come in, you can just come in. Just a comment to what he has just said. I know that in major delta in Nigeria, um, pollution represents a very big problem, especially because of um, pollution of the um, water sources of and even uh, the land of the people of the Niger Delta. So I know there's um, there are many um, many conversations open uh, in that area of the world. Even lawsuits being filed against these big multinational companies. Uh, thank you so much, Irene. Jackie Mayega, come in. Um, I just want to ask if you people can hear me very clearly. Yes, we can, Jackie. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much, Irene. I just want to, to comment that I didn't actually, like before, I didn't really think about climate change as much, but you've helped me think about it. And I've realized that here in Uganda, like the past month, the weather in the morning, you know, at about 7 a.m., usually the sun is out and it's already starting to become hot. But like the past month, it's been hazy and cloudy and 
So maybe, I don't know if, what really causes that haziness, if you could just educate me on that. I'm not sure what causes that. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much, Jackie, for your contribution. Um, well, climate change uh, is a long-term uh, process and it can have different impacts in different parts of the world. What is uh, true is that it is impacting everywhere and we can't really know how that is going to happen. For instance, uh, in my region, I, I come from Italy. I live in the northern part of, of Italy, very close to France, um, at the foot of the Alps. And this is a region where in the past it was snowing a lot, really, really a lot, like one meter and a half of snow every winter. Um, it was even making it difficult for us to go to school. But over the last 10 years, we don't see snow. We haven't seen snow almost at all. This year it has snowed quite a lot, but it was something unusual. We are not used to snow anymore. Um, and that you can already tell that something is happening that is not normal, it's not as it used to be. But yeah, it's very difficult to quantify exactly how um, climate change is really having an impact in different areas of the world. And this is something that, for instance, is creating problems in bringing these cases to courts because court, uh, judges are saying uh, it's really difficult to link uh, emissions from um, the industry, for instance, to um, effects of climate change. There's this causality nexus that is very difficult to demonstrate. Thank you so much, Irene. Actually, I also want to contribute about something that has been happening where I come from. I come from the Western part of Kenya around Lake Victoria. And uh, recently the place has been flooding when it rains the lake overflows, you know, and uh, even it reaches where we stay and our houses have flood, you know. So, and this never have, never used to happen. It has started happening just recently. And I think those are some of the effects of climate change that we are really experiencing, especially in the global South. Most of us aren't aware that, you know, these are as a result of the climate changes, you know, and it's something that we, we can do to, uh, so that they may not even affect our future generations. And it's not only happening around the Lake Victoria, other lakes also, even Lake Nakuru, I think it's uh, disappearing, something like that. So some are increasing in uh, size, some are really uh, disappearing. So that's something that we really need to look to after, you know, and, uh, also, apart from the from the lakes and uh, and uh, the rivers, there's also the fire that always just come in Savo. All, 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 almost like uh, let me say, every six months there's fire in the Savo National Park. I think those are some of the things that we should look at when it comes to climate change. Thank you, Irene. Thank you so much, Oketch. Yes, in many cases, climate change is even exacerbating. Um, climate pressures that were there already before. So um, it, may, it may just make things worse than they were before. Like it is happening. I, I see that in the chat, many people are commenting uh, about Lake Victoria seriously disappearing um, in Kampala, flooding Lake Victoria Basin and Surrendi areas. Yes, there are plenty of examples from around the world, really. Even here in, in Europe, like our uh, glaciers are disappearing and that is going to cause a huge problem uh, for water in the future because our water comes from the mountains. And if we don't have that source of water, what is gonna happen? This can lead to conflicts in the future, to migration. We really don't know what is gonna happen, but migration is going to increase also uh, because of climate pressures. Thank you so much, Irene, for that. If anybody has any additional contribution, let me check out the chat box. Angela Moruli, do you want to say something? Can just come in. Hi, good evening, everyone. Um, I'm currently in Nigeria, but I'm from Kenya. Um, and actually what I meant to say was that Lake Nakuru is disappearing. I was there over Christmas and it's, yeah, it's just really shocking to see 
um, how quickly these bodies of water are receding and yeah, how, how do we as individuals um, take up action essentially, or how can we play our bit and how can communities in the surrounding area also play their bit whilst also recognizing that they face um, several other challenges as well. So yeah, but that's just my small contribution. Thanks. This has been really great, by the way. I only came in towards the end, but it's been really great. Thank you. Thank you so much, Angela. Irene, do you want to come in and comment on Angela's? Uh, I just wanted to thank you very much, Angela. And don't worry if you came in late. Um, you can always see uh, the recording. It's going to be posted on Zara's Dream uh, website, I guess. Great, thank, thank you. you so Thank you very much. Is there any other questions? Uh, I don't know, I'll catch if you wanted to ask something else. And naturally, if anybody has any contribution, they can just come in. Animo? And then if you have any contribution, just come in. Meanwhile, I will just post some of the resources that I used uh, for my presentation today in the, in the chat box. Thank you. Thank you very much, Irene. You can just go ahead. If you have any more contribution just come in, we're about to end our discussion. Yes, I also wanted to say that if you want, um, I have a blog where I write about environmental and climate issues. So most of what I've been saying today is also uh, there and I will be writing a blog post about the presentation that we had today. So. This information is also going to be found there. I will post also the link in the chat box. In yeah, case thank it... you. Actually, I was about to tell you that so that you may show with us what you write. I actually looked at the blog post and it's very beautiful and very informative. I will encourage each and every one of us to go and check it out. Just share it with the rest of us. So if nobody wants to come in, I think we can uh, in conclude our discussion for today. Yeah, so Irene, you can just give us uh, like the last shot before we conclude. Irene. Yes, I'm here, sorry. <laughs> I was looking at these links to share. Uh, so yes, I just wanted to thank you, uh, Annette, very much for your great work and uh, your great help in making this conversation possible. I wanted to tell uh, Zara's Dream again for providing us with this opportunity to discuss this very important topic. And uh, I, want to, I want to thank everyone for joining us today and for your active participation. And it's been lovely. Uh, having th this discussion with you this afternoon and I hope I will see you soon and I hope I will learn from you as well very soon. So it's been a, a precious exchange of knowledge and of reflection. So I'm very grateful for that. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Irene. Actually, I think that people here on the call <clears throat> who doesn't know more about, about uh, Zara's Dream Sisters Keepers, so Zara's Dream Sisters Keepers is a component of Zara's Dream Role Model Pillar, and it was created by Zara's Dream Mentors, Mentees, and other young women worldwide. And here we empower young women through discussions on social media platforms and virtual meetings like this one. And uh, also in our meetings, we also have the males. So it's not just about female, even the men can just join us in the discussions. And, uh, and uh, the way I said, Irene Rizzo is our sister's keeper and she's representing Europe. We have other four other sister's keepers from four different regions, Africa, Asia, 
uh, North America and South America. And I'm so happy Naya was here. Naya, the one helping Irene is our sister skipper representing Asia. Thank you so much, Naya, for that. Yes, and, thank uh, you, Naya, for running the presentation. Thank you. Yeah, so if you want to join our community, we have a Facebook group. And uh, I'll share the link with you after this. Those who I know those who, who managed to get into the meeting, I'll share the link. And I just want to thank you so much, Irene, for the discussion. It has been a success. And I just want to thank everyone for joining us. We've learned so much from you. And actually, something that really struck me through this conversation was that you said that the involvement of women in environmental governance provides an opportunity to address social inequalities, you know? And that's something that not so many people know. And uh, I think uh, from this discussion, I hope it won't end here. And uh, all of us will put what we've learned today into practice because planet Earth is us. You know, we have to protect and save it from uh, our future generations. So uh, I just want to encourage you to find, uh, you know, uh, to find a way of uh, including these kind of conversations and talking them not only to just you, talk uh, with your family, your community members and find solutions to them. So thank you very much everyone for joining and uh, thank you very much Irene and uh, have a lovely evening, morning and day depending on where you're joining us from. Thank you very much. And uh, we have this discussion happen every month so next month we'll have the same discussion, same date, same time on 17th of March, and we will be tackling uh, food security. So I hope to see all of you there in that discussion. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Have a good day. Bye. 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 Yeah, thank you. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you.